Gluten-Tag. This is a crazy story on how fruit flies allowed me to make an amazing bread. Crazy because I think nobody has ever tried to do this before. And it's been a little bit of a roller coaster with many ups and downs. Now fruit flies, you probably hate them. They are causing billions of damages to farmers all around the world. When you have them at home, they are super annoying. It's very hard to get rid of them. But they have a big purpose. A very important purpose. They are sort of like bees. Except that bees are pollinating flowers and fruits. Fruit flies are doing exactly the same, but not for fruits and flowers, they are doing this for yeast. They are sort of the bees of bread making. Yeast are microorganisms that are everywhere, in the air, on your flour, on your skin. And when you're making a sourdough bread, like it has been done for thousands of years, you're trying to cultivate that wild yeast and you're using that to make a bread. Now just like other organisms, yeast also wants to reproduce and that's where the fruit flies come in. The yeast is creating an aroma and this aroma is attracting the fruit flies. Then the fruit fly is landing somewhere and fruit fly brought the wild yeast with it. Our yeast happily reproduced. Pretty fascinating, right? And now I thought, why not use this to our advantage? Why not attract some fruit flies very, very early in the bread making process? Allow those fruit flies to infect your dough with lots and lots of wild yeast spores. Then use that to make a bread. How would it taste? Would it be very fruity? I had this idea for quite some time, but finally had to test it. I got started by simply using my existing sourdough and then waiting for fruit flies to start munching on it. The dough attracted so many flies. The problem, however, is that the existing microorganisms inside of your sourdough are too strong. No new microorganisms from the fruit flies can come into your dough. So I had to make a completely new sourdough starter from scratch just using fruit flies. Now let's start making our fruit fly sourdough. I'm using 50 grams of whole wheat flour. And now comes the trick. I'm using a little bit of vinegar. And this already contains a lot of yeast aroma, so that's gonna attract all the fruit flies. I'm using 25 grams of vinegar. And then another 25 grams of water. And now I'm just gonna stir this. And I'm hoping that a lot of fruit flies are gonna arrive. Let's check this out in a bit. So then around two days in, let's start using that mixture and make our real sourdough starter. We're going to be using a little bit, a tiny amount of that mixture, and then we will feed that with equal parts of flour and water, just like we would do with every regular sourdough starter. Now on day three, I haven't fed it for two days, the starter looks a little strange. There's some sort of weird thing on top. Is this coming from the fruit flies? But there are some bubbles here. Let's feed it and hope there's nothing bad with it. And also the initial starter, now that I look at it, it looks quite moldy as far as I can see. But I had wished that there would be some, you know, tiny cute little fruit fly babies, but nope. Now mold is very, very bad. You don't want to be eating something moldy. But I got one cool trick up my sleeve. I'm converting the whole mixture into a liquid starter. This means I have five times as much water as I have flour. Normally you have equal parts of flour and water. And by doing so, I'm creating an environment that's perfect for the bacteria. And I'm hoping that the excess bacteria is going to manage the mold. So let's see what's about to happen. I'm hoping that we are able to get rid of this mold. See for yourself. This looks very, very moldy. I'm hoping that we are able to get rid of this mold. A little alive, but unhealthy. <laughs> so I'm trying to suck out just a little bit from the bottom, hoping I won't transfer this mold. This is all I'm gonna take. I'm gonna discard the rest and I will try to regrow the starter just from this. Let's see. Now just looking at this one more time here. This is good. It's alive, it's bubbly. You see that? It's just that we have this layer of mold on top. Wow, it's really alive. So this might actually work. seems that this magic trick has worked. So I'm gonna be feeding this one more time, hoping that I'm going to reduce the mold even further. Let's see what's gonna happen. The liquefying the starter seems to have helped a lot. There is no more mold and this starter seems to be nice and active. 
I see quite a few bubbles coming there from the stutter. Now this is the original piece of dough that I made and it doesn't look so healthy. I would have wished there to be some fly babies, but nope, this just looks gross. <laughs> I'm gonna discard it. Just to be sure that this stutter is really all right, I'll be giving it a few more feedings over the next day for one more additional week. I just wanna make sure that um, it's completely free of any other toxins. I hope, or well, we will see. I might die, but then it's for this channel, you know, we'll see. Now the fruit fly stutter has been fed like this for a week now and there are nice signs of activity. So I think we're ready to finally make a bread out of this. And finally, we are about to make the first sourdough dough. This has been quite an adventure so far. I'm just gonna be using around 40 grams of my liquid stutter, eight grams of salt, 400 grams of flour, and then another 320 grams of water, my default sourdough bread recipe. I don't wanna go too much into detail on the actual process, but if you're interested, please check out this video. This is my complete guide on making sourdough bread. It's gonna make you amazing bread every time. And I'm using exactly that recipe just with this amazing fruit fly stutter now. After a little bit of kneading, this is how the dough looks like. It looks nice and smooth. I was kneading by hand, but you could also totally use your stand mixer. What I'm about to show you next is the single most important trick to always nail sourdough bread. So grab some popcorn and enjoy. We are extracting a small tiny piece from the dough. We are putting this into a glass, whatever you have at hand. It should be of cylindrical shape, ideally, nerd mode off. And once this thing here doubled in size, you could also totally eyeball the main though. Once this doubled in size, our dough is ready. This single simple trick makes you a so much better baker. Don't rely on timings. It might take 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours. I really have no idea. But once this doubled in size, this dough is ready. I was so happy. I thought everything was going exactly to plan. The dough doubled, but when I decided to bake it, this happened. The enemy of all sourdough bakers. A very, very flat, sad looking pancake. But let's check the crumb. Let's see how the bread looks like from the inside. It's been a day since I baked this dough and let's check the crumb of our fruit fly experiment. Not too bad, I gotta say. Looking quite good. But overall, I would say that there has been too little yeast activity inside of this dough. This is actually a very common problem, especially when you're making a new sourdough stutter. The yeast bacteria ratio is simply not in a good balance you're making much flatter bread than you could. After a lot of feedings, this starts to balance and you'll be making better bread. But there's another even simpler trick that I can show you that's gonna greatly boost the yeast activity now. Originally, I didn't want to have so much yeast activity because I wanted to have the bacteria. The bacteria was my number one force to get rid of the mold, if you remember. Now, to boost the yeast again, all I'm doing is I'm feeding the dough with one part of flour and half a part of water. So that's 50% of water based on the flour. And I'm hoping that this is gonna create me a yeast nuke. Let's see. And what happens next is richtig geiler sheet, like we Germans say, a uh, very, very awesomeness incoming. See for yourself. Just check this out. This dough has nicely doubled in size and it looks so good and puffy. Time now to shape this. And ta-da, here we go. I think it looks very nice from the outside now, but we don't have so much of an ear. So I think I'm just gonna do it one more time. And just check this out. I think the crumb of this bread is already looking perfect. They say the third time is a charm, right? So let's try this one more time. 
Are you ready to see what's hiding inside? I'm hoping for a beautiful piece of bread. <laughs> I'm gonna let this bake for another 10 minutes and then our bread is ready. I can't wait to taste this. Ta-da! <laughs> this bread turned out so good. Let's let this cool down now and then slice it. Wow. I think the crumb now looks amazing. It's quite open here. It's a little bit too open. Maybe I should have shaped the dough just a little bit tighter, but this is the perfect bread. It's so fluffy and now let's taste this. Wow, it's so fluffy. I don't know what to say, but the flavor of this bread is just incredible. It tastes slightly fruity, and then you have that tang from the sourdough coming in, paired with the perfect consistency of the crust and the crumb. This to me is the perfect sourdough bread. Definitely one of the best ones I made so far. This has been such a crazy experiment. Would you dare to eat a bread like this? Now everyone has a price. What would be your price tag? How much would somebody need to pay you in order to eat this bread? There are some other implications. Normally a sourdough bread is vegan. Is this bread still vegan? Share your opinion in the comment section and you have a chance to win an awesome shirt like this one. Thanks for watching and may the gluten be with you.